Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. Uh, this video we're going to explore Thrive Architect. It is a WordPress page builder and I've heard uh, some interesting reviews about it. Interesting, good, 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 interesting. Um, I've heard lots of people talking about it and I thought it was time to explore it for myself. So we are going to build a new page layout and um, I haven't played with Thrive Architect before so this is not like I practiced in before I started recording and you guys are just going to see the speed version of it. No. Um, so you're going to watch me figure it out and um, I like to do that because I figure it's a good test for how easy it is for you know for everybody else to figure it out. So so this is what we're starting with. This is my sandbox website. Um, this is the blank page that I plan on using for it. I ran a GT metrics test on it so that we have something to compare it to. So currently in its current boring, bland, blah state, it loaded in 0.9 seconds and was 118 kilobytes. I'm not so much worried about those because whatever for right now. Um, but so this is the stuff that I want to see how much it changes after we have the page built in Thrive Architect. And now I know that any page is going to change when we start adding content and colors and CSS and images and all of that stuff. Um, but I just I just wanted to check. So this is the before results. And, um, and here's our, our blank empty page. And before we get started, um, so for this site, I'm using the Generate Press theme. So I'm going to go here back actually into the page or the, yeah, the page editor. And um, we're going to make some changes real quick. So um, for, I'm going to disable the page title because I don't need that on the home page. Um, we're going to set it to content with no sidebars because I don't want that for this. And the page builder container we're going to set to go full width. So I'm going to go ahead and update that. And that's going to change this just a little bit. We should get rid of the sidebar over here. And as you can see, all that we're left with is comments. Um, and of course, no, I don't remember. We're just going to turn off comments. We'll just do that. And now we are left with basically nothing. We have a header, we have a menu, and right up there is the footer, which is perfect. This is exactly what we want. So now I'm going to go ahead and click into the Edit with Thrive Architect. Now this is available on the front end. As you can see, I also have that on the back end, but we're going to work from the front. So for this, uh, for, for today's experiment, I have a layout in mind that I want to use. Um, it's kind of a fairly common one. We're going to do a hero image at the top with the background and then some text over it. Uh, maybe a couple of col columns below that. Kind of a fairly common um, site layout, page layout, and that I, I have a feeling a lot of people will end up using. And I wanted to test it with this because, one, I want to see how easy it is to make something like this. Um, and, you know, two, with, let's see how that performance-wise compares to, um, to some other things. Okay, so we are in the Thrive Architect Editor. Um, I'm going to go, we've got some options over here. There's our Add Element. We can change templates, and we've got some basic settings. Let's take a look at these basic settings real quick here. Um, okay, so we actually don't want need any of those. We can customize the CSS and do some other stuff. Page events like, um, oh, we can do like an exit intent pop-up or um, a timed pop-up. That might be pretty interesting to play with later. Um, We've got landing pages that we could import, but we don't want to go over our current stuff. All right, so there's some options here that might be worth exploring, but not right now. So let's just go build a site. All right, so um, let's see. Now, okay, I will say that I did peek a little at some, um, some how-to videos because um, I wanted to not look like a complete fool. And so what I have learned is that if we want to have a background thing, a background section, like we want for the hero section, we're going to use this background section deal. So we're just going to take that. We're going to drag it in here. Um, and these are some of our options for it. So we can, we've got some styles. We can do uh, 
content max width and that's so that's the content inside here so this um, looks like maybe the section right goes all the way to the edges we see here um, but the content inside it is going to be um, is going to have a max width so we've got a minimum height vertical position I usually like to have the centered but we'll see we're going to say stretch to fit screen width so that it does cover the whole width even when we're not um, looking at a reduced screen as we are now with that little little guy there so you'll see here we have we've got that going on all right decorations decorations gives us some borders it looks like typography we can set typography for the whole section uh, layout position background style all right oh we can do background layers so we can do like a gradient on top which is kind of neat uh, looks like we have the option for a video background I can do a color you'd think as much as I like teal that I would actually save those colors but I never do all right let's go with this bad boy and I see an option here to add my color so let's see we'll save that and apparently it's called Niagara um, we've got borders and corners very cool scroll behavior so do we want it to be sticky that would be good for doing like um, a parallax sort of background I guess shadows responsiveness and some H HTML attributes all right so that's all the stuff that just came up over here looks like we also have some hover state options we can change it <coughs> But let's look over here and see what we got. So that's our pointer for directions. If we click here, we can save this element for later use. That's awesome. This looks like a duplicate and there's a trash can. So where do I add my background picture? And I guess that's over here under our background styles. We're going to choose an image. I never remember what I have already up on this site. This is where I have accumulated lots of random images. Okay, so let's grab one of my favorite stock images. We'll use this one. Let's pull it in there because I know it's going to be big enough to do um, to do a full screen image. We're going to insert that. All right, so. This looks weird, right? Let's see. So we want it to, if we say contain, obviously that's tiny in this little thing. We say stretch. Um, okay. We're going to say apply. So let's add in some other stuff on here so that we can see more of this. All right. So we want a heading. One of these things over here has got to be a heading, right? Or maybe it's just text. No, doesn't look like text. Or we're going to get rid of that. Let's find a heading. Hmm. All right. So we add some. I feel like this can't be right really background I want no background behind my text hmm all right so we have our text and Aha, there's where we can make it a heading. All right, so now we've got a heading. But what if I want this text over? Aha, so I want it over the background. There we go. Now we got rid of the background. And, um, hmm. Let's say, I know I saw some columns in here. So let's put it above the text. Let's do half and half. 
And now I want to drag this text into, there we go, the left column. Awesome. All right, now I have this background image. I would like to put, am I on the background section? Okay, so that's cool. Up here, when you're clicking on the different things, you can see uh, some of the other sections as well. So like, I know I want to get to the background section, but I just click on the text and then I can go to the background section here. And now I want to add, let's see, I want to add a color. I want to add a white, but we're going to play with the transparency so that it makes that text easier to read, right? So let's do that. And now we've got that over on top of the background. So that's cool. I feel like it's doing something weird with the background though. I picked that background image. But, all right, what do we got going on here? Um, I don't want to compress full-size image. Okay. All right. Oh, that looks better. Okay, so I think for some reason it was maybe grabbing a smaller version of the image, and now I just made sure we select full-size, and that looks less fuzzy somehow. That was weird. Um, it's a little odd that that does that by default, but hey, whatever. All right. Um, so actually, what I would love to do is, let's see, I would actually really like for this text to be centered. So we're going to do this, and we're going to drag this uh, over here. And let's get rid of these columns down here because I don't actually need them anymore. All right, because I want that centered. And let's center the text. Oh, let's do one of these. And um, I want some spacing here. So let's see. Let's go to our background section. Main options. No. Padding and stuff is oh, layout and position, I bet. There we go. Cool. Oh, I don't want to do margin. Okay. Let's try padding. All right. So we'll give it some space so we see more of the background picture. The words aren't all squished in there. Okay. All right. So, so far, not so bad. Um, I think it does help that I have some experience using other page builders. So I already kind of know, like, what else should be possible. Um, all right, let's take another look here. So we're going to add a new row down here that's going to have uh, maybe some call to action here. Um, let's see, text. And we'll just do our services as a handy little reminder. All right, we're going to say stop for now. All right, so let's see, services, we want to make this center. This is going to be an H2. No, I really wanted it centered. Um, I've learned this trick here, so let's add some padding above that because I don't need it squished. <coughs> and maybe some below it too. And then we're going to add, let's do columns. Let's do three columns. And let's see, we want to do, what do we want to do with these? All right, so we want to do an icon. Do we do icons? We do icons. Look at that. All right, Ooh, where'd you go? All right, we'll figure that out in a second. Let's pick an icon. So let's see, for the first one, I don't know. What should we do? We'll do our, our CSS less thing here. But really, I wanted you over here in my column. Perfect. Okay. All right. So that's in there. And I like that it centered the icon. We can have borders. Oh, this is the column. Right. Let's go in here. And let's look at our image, our icon image. Um, borders, position, animation. All right. 
Cool. All right, so let's add some text below that. And I'm going to go to my lips and feed because the brain is not working this early in the morning to come up with some placeholder text. I'm just going to grab some more Epsom. Uh, that looks like enough for these purposes. Let's go back in here. Let's paste. Ta-da! We have probably way too much. So we'll just grab that out of there. Excellent. Okay. So if I wanted to duplicate this whole thing, because I want to copy that over there. I don't see the option to do that. So I can duplicate my text box, right? Which is handy because if I'm doing styling and background images and stuff like that on it, then I want to just be able to copy it without having to restyle every individual element. But it would be nice if I could just say like this whole column, I would like to do that again. And now granted, it's possible that there may be a way because this is my first time exploring. Um, exploring Thrive. The only column options I see really is delete, which just makes me a little bit sad. All right, we're going to duplicate that again. And we're going to drag you over here. So we've got our icon, and I can always add another icon. I do like the search thing up here. This is neat. Um, and so we can pick that. I want, obviously, to move that above the text, though. Whoa. What happened there? Okay, there we go. Had that in the wrong place. That was a little bit finicky. All right, so if we go click there and then I click icon, let's see if we can get the icon to sort of show up at least where we want it to. Um, icon, no really. Okay. And um, yeah, we'll do we'll do audible because we like audiobooks. All right, so we're gonna go above that text in that column. Okay. <sighs> So we have some column divider things. I think those are just there for, for visual purposes. Can I change, let's see, select in the column. Can I change like the background color for just one column? Ooh, I can. So just one column. I want to have, wait, what is this? I don't want. Okay, I was just being silly is what I was doing. So then we can add that. Oh, let's add a new favorite so we can come back to this color. And then there's my apply. All right, let's save before it nags me again. Okay, and now I can go to my positioning and let's add some padding here because now I've added the background color. It looks a little squished in there. So. That's kind of cool. You can do background colors for each of the different columns if you wanted to. And then ooh, let's see if this works. If I go to typography, wait, wait, go back to the column. If I go to typography and change the color, ah, uh, but it didn't go for the icon. All right, so we'll do that separate. Let's see. Icon. There we go. All right. <clears throat> It's actually kind of terrible for accessibility purposes, um, but we're just going to leave that for demonstration purposes now. All right, so let's see then if I wanted to have another background section here down below, we'll maybe have like a call to action. Let's do my favorite blue background color again. Wait, where'd you go? Why didn't you do anything? I said, oh, that's because I picked it for the typography. No, I don't want it for the typography. I need more coffee. Um, I also need my voice to not be going screwy for my allergies. All right, and we know, I know that when I get in here, I'm going to want to add, where was that padding, right? So let's, let's add that while I'm in here. So we have that. 
Now, let's see what, <clears throat> excuse me, let's see what other kind of elements we have. So we've got buttons, that's cool. We could use that for a call to action row. We can do a logo. Uh, I like the click to tweet. Content reveal, that looks like it could be interesting. We've got some countdowns, we've got a menu. Um, fill counter, nifty. This lead generation one, what does that do? Let's plop that. No, you didn't go where I wanted you to go. In the background section. Not below the background section. Hello. It's not listening to me. This makes me sad. All right, so this just adds in <clears throat> an opt-in form. Inside background section. Perfect, that's what I wanted. All right, and what happens when we click on this? What are our options here? So we've got our styling options. I want to see the main options, though. Where do we go? So we can connect it to our services. That's cool. So you can do, um, I'm guessing, MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, AWeber, um, ConvertKit, all of those kinds of things. Let's see. Uh, let's add a new API connection. Let's see what it gives me. We're opening a page in the dashboard now. Have a little sip of coffee. All right, so this is not, there's, there's lots of options, but um, it's not maybe as intuitive as uh, lots of different stuff here. Social media things, um, so many different email marketing campaigns, the webinar stuff that you can connect directly to the webinar. That's very cool. Um, but I wish that it kind of happened here instead of opening a new page on, on the dashboard. So, yeah, whatever. All right. So one thing we haven't tried yet, and I know you can do in like Backup Buddy, is um, if I want to add, decide that I want to add some text, right, next to... Um, all right, there's a call to action. Oh, there's a call to action. Sorry, I know that was like three se half sentences in one. Um, oh, nice. There's some call to action templates here. All right, this is kind of this is kind of cool. So this is sort of actually where I was going with some text on the left and a button on the right. Uh, but I'm I'm curious to see. I like this one. I actually really, really like the layout of this one. So if I just say choose template, what happens? Let's see what happens. So it plopped that in. It gives me the heading. And what happens? Can I pick what happens when we go on the button? Let's see. The button link. Okay, so the button can go to a link. It can go to in a dynamic link. What do button dynamic links do? Oh. All right, so we can go to like our contact page or something. But it doesn't seem like it's doing like a pop-up sort of thing, um, which is a very lead pages -y sort of, or at least that's where the first place I saw it, where once you click like the subscribe button, the form pops up um, on top of the page. But this is pretty cool. I like that we can do this layout and um, that you can just sort of pick that whole layout and have it be done. Um, all right, so let me go back to seeing, though, if I want to just take some text and put it next to, there we go. So I don't know if you can see, there's a little blue line that showed up there. So I can drop some text in next to my opt-in form, and then I can kind of do that. And maybe for this row... Nice. See, so up here on the top, we said we want the content to go full width, right? And um, down here, though, I can set it so that it doesn't go beyond a certain width. Um, and let's see, we're going to have it centered. Um, okay. All right, cool. So we can do our, our lorem ipsum in here. Uh, which page was I on? There we go. Which tab? All right. And let's see. I'm going to go ahead and actually duplicate this because I wanted to have... I 
like I wanted to be able to do a call to action header up here. So we're just going to do that. And now again, it looks like I can change the text color here, but what we discovered before was I can also kind of take, if I'm just clicked on the background section, so the row, uh, I can do typography there and kind of set it for the whole row, which is very handy because then I don't have to worry about going into each individual section um, and doing that. Okay, so I like this, but I want this column, let's see, I want the column to have a little bit more space. So let's go back to our layout and positioning. I mean, overall, this isn't, um, this is really, really good. Um, Plugin. I'm, I'm liking what I can do with it. There's definitely a lot of element options that are over here. Um, definitely a lot of other things that I want to explore, like dropping in a Google Map and the progress bar, and like those are fun uh, visual elements to have on the page. Um, so it's not so bad. Oh, post list. Let's see what our options are for styling our blog posts. Okay, all right. So we've got template types here. We've got featured image. This is cool. I like I, I, I like the way I think that's supposed to work. We've got a kind of standard layout here with the featured image on the left and some text on the right. I like the circles. This is also a pretty layout. So this is maybe not what you would want to do on a landing page, right? You're not going to put a whole lot of um, post images or blog posts on a landing page, but on a home page or a blog page, um, this is definitely cool. So these posts, I, I think I don't have featured images set for them. I like the circle feature though, that's kind of neat. Um, so I would have to say that all in all, um, I'm enjoying Thrive Architect. I think I would like to uh, play, play with it to build a site. Um, I, I think it has some interesting power the, of what you can do with it. And this is all just with the basic stuff, right? They have um, landing pages and, you know, other like templates and stuff so that you don't have to start from scratch each time. I like to do that because, you know, I'm one of those weird people, but whatever. Um, templates and symbols. I love templates. Choose template. What do I got? I click and choose template and nothing is happening. All right. Well, whatever. We'll come back to that. Oh, you know what? That might be for things that I like when I make my own content templates, right? So like if I said I like this row and there was an option, this doodad, right? So we say this is the CTA row. Oh, I just save that there. So now if I came down here, all the way down here, and I said insert templates and symbols, and there's a CTA row. Okay, so that's our like saved rows and stuff. That's cool. Um, anyway, I keep interrupting myself. I don't know if that's too much coffee or not enough coffee. But all in all, I think um, I'm really enjoying Thrive and um, I might have to, I think I'm going to have to do like a battle of the page builders soon and come up with one layout and let's see what um, they all look like. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. All right, so I've saved my work. How do I get out of here? What do you do? Save and exit. All right, cool. Um, I want to exit the page. I want to go back and actually see what it looks like without the editor there. So we've got our hero image. We've got our columns. I would definitely need to add some padding there to those columns. Not so bad. Let's go back to GT Metrics and retest it. So remember, this was the before, the blah, the, the I hadn't done anything to it with Thrive. That was all just kind of the native um, generate press boring before you've started building your page sort of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and click the retest button here in GT Metrics. It's going to take a minute or so. Um, I might have to babble to you for a minute or so while we're doing that, but uh, this is this is interesting. Um, and I am definitely curious to uh, expand. So if you use Thrive Architect, um, if you could leave a comment below and let me know um, what you've built with it. I'd love to see some links 
to what you've made and, and stuff like that, because, um, Oh, this one I'm definitely going to have to explore a little bit and, and see what it does. So, um, so our page load time has jumped up to 1.8 seconds. Uh, our size is 4.6 megs. So, I mean, that's all totally respectable. And as you can see here, I've done no other optimization. If, if optimization is like the thing that you, you pay attention to, I haven't turned on gzip or browser caching or anything like that for the site. Um, because I was just playing with it today and we wanted to like sort of experiment, but obviously there are things that I could do, um, to enhance the page optimization but I think overall it loads pretty quickly for what we've got um, and I think I, I would like to do another test of making maybe a more involved page layout and um, and see where that goes but but definitely this is a plugin um, Thrive Architect is definitely a plugin worth exploring if you're looking for a page builder um, to make uh, making your sites just a little bit easier for you. So uh, thanks for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed my rambling uh, introduction to Thrive Architect. I'm going to try to maybe do some more videos more in depth on, on some of the other features. Um, so I hope you'll come back. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you to like and subscribe and click the bell so that you get notified when I release a new video. Thanks for watching. Bye.